That's a good nugget right there. Um, I have so much respect for Purdue and, and Paint and what he's built here, and, and, uh, um, and yet I'm really, really proud of our guys. Uh, there was a, a, a toughness that you have to have to be one of Matt's teams, and, and, and Paint does such an unbelievable job. And, and uh, I don't know if you ever can count on going 9 of 10 to start the second half, uh, but I thought our guys executed. Uh, you get a little concerned when they get three offensive rebounds on the first possession, and uh, but uh, uh, I was I was ecstatic at half. Uh, we played so long without Georgie. Uh, we had crazy lineups in there that we don't normally have, and uh, you know we had to play Jermaine Hamlin a little bit and, and, and give us a few minutes, and we played Demonte at the four, and and uh, you know Allen's uh, unfortunate situation, which. In no way, shape, or form, he apologized to their young man. We don't condone any of that, and uh, that's not part of, of of anything we're trying to do in our program. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, I, I was I was I was proud of our guys, and then uh, I thought the key to the game was our attention to detail on the scouting report to hold the, hold them to three point three of eight uh, from the three point line was huge. Uh, they make 9.8, I think, at home, and uh, we knew that uh, we felt like it would be very challenging for them to make enough twos to to, to beat us. So that was a big part of our game plan, and, and uh, Jed had the scout and had our guys dialed in on it. Brad, I think Hopi started three for seven. What changed for him? He obviously caught fire late. Well, he should take Io to dinner. Uh, 11 assists, and most of those were lobs to him. And, and um, you know, there was uh, his activity on the glass got him a few easy baskets as well. Uh, you know, Kofi's a load. And I don't think there was any one thing. I think it was uh, Georgie on the court helps him, uh, especially when Georgie's making threes. But uh, yeah, I mean, we just we tried to play a lot in the middle third of the floor, and and. Uh, Get him rolling to the rim, and, and he's he's a ton when you do that. Brendan um, Griffin, projection. What did you tell him, and what would you tell your team? Because that could have seemingly changed the game, and it did for a little bit. But well, I told him to go locker room, and then I moved on, and uh, there wasn't any. I just said, you know, you, you always have to overcome things in in, in, in the game, and we we're going to have to overcome that. And people are going to have to step up and and uh, uh, take that role and. Uh, you know, that'll be something we'll talk about a little more tomorrow. At 439, Purdue's on a run to get under 10 points. You call a timeout, sort of a textbook coaching move, and it changed everything. What did you say in the timeout? Toughness. I said, this is this is what we're about. This is what we're made for. There's a, there's a reason we practice hard. There's a reason we challenge you and, and stress you in practice. And and for these moments when the, when the crowd gets in it, and and it's connectivity and, and uh, togetherness and toughness. And I said, that's what we have to do right now. We've got to have a great possession. Let's execute. And uh, then let's go down the other end and get a stop. It's really that simple. I think maybe Isle's been building to a game like this almost. He's you know, led the team in assists last year. But just what has maybe, I don't change, but just come out of him as a, a playmaker, uh, both as a scorer and for his teammates? Well, I think the one thing is, you know, we're, we're doing a better job of putting him in the right places. And, and Trent at the point, Trent had a couple turnovers tonight, so he's got, set, he got two turnovers in the last seven games. That's relieved a lot of stress for Maya. But it's putting him in a position where he's not having to, having to necessarily play with the ball. As he brings the ball up the court, he can, uh, he's got movement before it, triple threat before it. Uh, and then he's, he's, we've got guys making shots. You, you don't get 11 assists without you know, people stepping up and making shots, but his reads are great. And I was becoming an elite, elite closer. And <coughs> not just with his shooting, uh, but uh, but with his passing and guys are just putting it on it where guys can make uh, make the right plays. Fred, way in the back. Um, you mentioned Trent there. He had only seven shots, but he had a season high 21 points. Just how valuable was that in pulling out the win today? I mean, the kid's been in the gym a lot in the last 10 days shooting balls and, and, and trying to get going. And, and 
I always felt like when, when Trent and I will get going, you know, we've got a whole nother level to get to offensively. And, and um, yeah, I mean, Trent has the ability to make hard shots. And not a lot of people have that ability. So he can have a guy right in him. I mean, he had a one off and out of bounds play that was in and out. The guy's right in his jersey. And, and Trent enjoys that. He, he relishes having a guy in his face and uh, has that ability. So, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's helped our team so much. And then what he does defensively is elite. So I was going to ask you about what he did on the defensive end, taking Savanovich completely out of what he wanted to do. At what point did you kind of understand that Trent was your guy, you know, that you could hand him somebody and say that that's your guy, shut him down? Yeah, I think he's built to it over the course of his career. I mean, it sure wasn't his freshman year. Uh, we tried to hide him his freshman year. Uh, but uh, uh, but he, I think it speaks to his pride and his character and, and who he is as a person. He wants to win. And uh, now he's he's got that feeling of, you know, he can guard anybody. And... Um, you know, to uh, to run as much as he runs, and you know, if, if you know Trent, Trent never gets tired. And tonight he ha actually has to come out of the game, so that's the first time all year. So uh, he he had his hands full, and and they picked him up full court and faced that for 33 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, he deserves a good night's sleep. Right in the back. Uh, you guys have talked so much about defending home court. Road teams coming into tonight, just 7-42 and 42 on the season. What does your second road win mean for you guys? Well, it's a nugget, no doubt, I, you know, especially here. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's um, the best league in the country. I think 12 teams in the top 40. There's no easy ones. Um, I, I hope it, it means we're developing an identity of toughness, and, and, and that's what it takes to win. Uh, on the road, it's so hard in this league. Um, you know, and we just got to keep building. We got to keep. We got to keep growing. We got to become tougher. We can't give up three offensive rebounds in the first possession. Those are little things that swing momentum, and those are those are things we talk to this team about a lot. But uh, uh, you know, we're not going to have those nights where we shoot seventy-five percent or whatever it was in the second half. You're going to have to grit it out like we did against Rutgers shooting 29% per game. And, uh, those are the ultimate toughest things we're trying to get to. Fred, outstanding games from Ohio Kofi and Trent. Does it feel like the three of them and the team as a whole have gone to another level? Oh, I mean, in certain phases, I think so. Um, if you'd asked me that after the Northwestern game, I would have said no. Uh, but but I think it shows what we can what we can become. Uh, yeah, this is a hard place to play. It's a loud loud building, and, and we, I thought we did a good job of neutralizing that. And and uh, and yet it was um, uh, a credit to our guys because we've been able to grow through that and, and grow to that point. So I hope I hope we see that and can really continue to to, to grow. Coach, talking about how much you admire this program, what it's built on. What does it say? you to do what you did to them on the glass and then have their players say afterwards you know they out us. us. There's no greater compliment. There's no greater compliment. I, all you can all you can ask is um, for an opposing coach or for an opposing player to say you guys play really really hard and you out toughed us and, and you know execution is fleeting. Uh, shot making is fleeting. That's all for you guys to write about and talk about but as coaches that's substance. And that's that's the substance we want our program to be about, and and you know I, I had the, I was very fortunate. You know, I was in Myrtle Beach recruiting, and got to sit and talk with with Coach Katie for a while at, at an event, and, you know. And I I've, I've gotten to know Coach over the years through Coach Huggins, and and you understand what this program's built about, and you know there, there's a reason why this program's been so successful. So for them to say that that means a lot. Right. About a month or so ago, you questioned maybe some leadership uh, on your team. How much has that changed, if at all? How have you seen it change? No, I think it's a collective group. Um, I don't think there's been any one person. I think that uh, uh, the, the challenges come in practice in terms of staying connected. I think our staff has done an unbelievable job of, of doing that. Um, you know, we, we've tried to. Uh, we've, we've tried to prepare these guys, and we've talked at nauseam about, you know, trying to win when you're when you're 
don't make baskets and toughness and and, and that's been the theme and uh, so I think everybody's you know kind of buying into that and, and Jeremy at the end of the day I think one of the biggest things is just role identification guys understanding their roles and, and, and starting to play with those two questions Go ahead. I just want to go back to the idea of just, just getting another Big Ten road win. Obviously, just taking sort of a big picture look at it. Um, what's your theory on just why there's been this drastic of a difference between you know road and home in the league this year? Obviously, you're always having your advantage, but the fact that it's been this much of a difference. I, I don't know. I was with Paint, Izzo, Boy Williams, and myself, and we were sitting in a recruiting visit and the other night on the road and trying to figure that out and I you know I they don't have it in, in the ACC I, I think it's the, the crowds I think it's the level of coaching uh, I think some of it may be the three-point line being moved back I think it's I I, I wish I knew um, the league's got really good players um, I think at, at no other time maybe uh, <laughs> maybe in the history of basketball, maybe the Big East back in the day when they got 11 teams in and the ninth, what was it, the ninth seed in the tournament won the NCAA championship that year. Has there been a league that's more deserving of having 11, 12 teams in the NCAA tournament were that good? Uh, I, don't, I don't have an answer to that. I really don't. I, I, I'd like to speculate, but I know it's the, the, the fantastic fans and the terrific coaches. Last one here. Georgie turned down like three just wide open threes in the, the first half. Was that a halftime conversation? And how big was it for him to make two in the second? Well, I think the one thing he understood, he, he understood that what our game plan was in terms of trying to attack the front of the rim, trying to put pressure on them uh, that way. Uh, he's always going to get those shots. And, and, and his IQ allowed him to turn down the first one. No one, the, the second time it comes around, he may, he may get those. And, uh, you know, it shows how good a player he is to set for 17 minutes and then still keep that, that mojo mentally uh, going so you can knock those down. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Go ahead here.